Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show all of you how to pixelate blur specific areas of your video, including with the example of this bag over on the left, adding a little bit of tracking in case a object happens to move a little bit in your shot and you still want to be able to blur it out. So over here we have the exact same clip. I'm going to take it and go over to the color page. There's many areas where you can do blur effects inside of Resolve, but if you're trying to target a specific area and you want to track it, then probably doing it on the color page is going to be your best bet. So if you want to target a specific area in your video for blurring, such as the labels on these boxes over here, then you can go over to the power window tab at the bottom over here, and you have various shapes that you can use to target a specific region. So if the object you're trying to blur out has a really basic shape, you can probably get away with just using a linear or a circle over here as your power window shape. So we'll start by using a linear rectangular shape here. So I'm going to click on this and you'll see a power window box shows up in the video frame up here. So to turn the shape of this window into the shape of this box, I'm going to take each of these four corners with the white circles and I'm going to aim it at, roughly speaking, the corners of the box in the shot. Now I know that this specific box doesn't move, so this particular example isn't going to need any tracking. So if we look into the nodes and this corrector node specifically, what we'll notice inside of the preview window is that the only thing that's now showing in this corrector node is the area which we have selected with the power window. So if we add any effects to this node, they're only going to be applying to the areas which are not masked out. So if we apply any effects, to this node now, they're only going to be applying to the visible areas inside of our original video frame. So if we want to blur multiple boxes at once, we can do that by using extra power windows. So I'm going to click over here for the curve power window, just so that we can manually define one. So how the curve power window works here is that we left click to set a point, and then we go where we want to add more points, left click, and it's going to draw a line between them. Now, if we left click and hold, it's going to actually add a curve to the line, basically a Bezier curve like this. And you can see it's also controlled by the little handles that pop out. I'm going to hit Control Z though, because in this case, since it's basically a rectangle shape, we don't need a curve. It doesn't make sense here. So I'm just going to left click a few more times. And then when I get to this point, I want to close the line and finish this shape. So I'm just going to left click on the original point. And we now have our power window created with the curve tool. So now we're at the trickier part, which is where we need to track the shape of this bag from the first frame to the last frame of this clip. And then we'll add the mosaic blur onto all three of them at once. So to add an extra power window, of roughly this shape, I'll click on the add linear power window button here. So we get another box shape at the bottom. And I'll take this power window and I will position it to the shape of the bag wherever we need to do the mosaic blur. So let's just roughly define it here. And then the bottom left point as well. That looks roughly okay. Okay, so now we need to track this specific power window. So we can tell that it's selected because our lines for the power window are highlighted with white. You can see the other power windows not selected. Everything's grayed out. So we want to track this power window. Since it's selected, we can go over to the tracker tab, which is right to the right. So we go over here. Make sure you're positioned at the first frame of the clip so that you can track it from start to finish. And then we're just going to hit this little track forward button. So DaVinci Resolve tries to look at the video information from the original frame where we're trying to track and then trying to keep on top of it for every frame that progresses towards the end of the clip. And it does it on each of these dimensions, which you can toggle on and off. In this case, there's no harm in leaving all of them on. It gets us a really good track. So if we go to the first frame of this clip and hit play, we'll see that the front of the bag is tracked really, really well across the shot. So imagine if we had another label here, uh, we'd probably be good for blurring it out at this point. So in order to add an effect onto the corrector node, that's this little node up here, we simply need to open up open effects if it's not open already. And we can select from a lot of different effects inside of Resolve. But of course, we're just doing a simple blur. So right up here at the top, we can select Mosaic Blur and just drag it onto our corrector node. So when we do that, you'll notice that these three sections we defined with the three power windows are now blurred out a little bit. 
we can look across the shot and see that the bag, which moves a little bit, is still blurred out regardless of its position, which is very nice. That's exactly what we want. Now, the last thing we have to do is just kind of adjust some of the settings in the Mosaic blur. So you might want it to look a little more pixelated than this. So we can turn down the pixel frequency if you want to get giant pixels, making it very obvious that it's a Mosaic slash pixelate kind of blur and not one of the other ones like a Gaussian blur. So at this point, we're basically done. If you don't like this kind of blur, one option would be to turn up the smooth strength and that'll make it look a lot more like other kinds of blurs, where it's just kind of a generic haze rather than these crisp pixels. Alternatively, you can just go back to the library tab over here and choose a different kind of blur, drag it onto the clip. And then when you come back over here to the settings, you can just toggle off your Mosaic blur. So that in a nutshell is how you can use the color page power windows and blurs such as a mosaic or pixelated blur in order to blur out and hide specific areas of your video, such as a label or a person's face. So that's gonna be it for this quick tutorial. I've been Chris, I hope all of you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my future video content.